Russia's alarm about NATO actually went into top gear in 2008 for a very simple reason, which was George W. Bush, that master of diplomacy, the man who gave us the Iraq war, forced NATO into making a declaration that Ukraine would be invited to join in 2008. That was the point at which this war became almost certainly inevitable and was an act of plain aggression, especially since it followed Putin's 2007 speech in Munich, in which he said, what is this alliance directed against? What is it that you are doing? Probably the, the, the loudest peaceful diplomatic warning that he was ever going to make. The response by George W. Bush, the most aggressive statement he ever made. An extraordinary piece of behavior. Now, it, 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 the, these things have to be borne in mind. And then Ed was, was refers to Ukrainians. There are more, there's more than one kind of Ukrainians. Since 2014, when all those people who say they, they really want Ukraine to have agency, happily watched as Ukraine's elected president was overthrown in an armed putsch uh, containing quite large numbers of extremely unpleasant people quite unconstitutionally, and did nothing about it and indeed made excuses for it. How you can say that you're in favor of Ukrainian agency, I don't know. Since then, millions of Ukrainians, particularly Russian-speaking and Russian-oriented Ukrainians in the East, have been entirely excluded from Ukrainian democratic politics. Well, uh, most of my Ukrainian family are Russian speakers in Ukraine. They all support Ukraine defending itself. None of them are pro-Russian in the sense that they want pieces of their country to be bitten off over time. This. Uh, alternative history, to put it very kindly, uh, that we've just heard from both speakers. Uh, the idea that uh, President Yanukovych was overthrown in a coup uh, is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Let me remind people what actually happened. May I? Yeah, um, I do. What actually happened was uh, President Yanukovych, on his election, promised to join a trade treaty with the European Union. And when he refused to do so, and instead under pressure from Vladimir Putin, uh, chose not to do that and to instead promise to sign a treaty with Russia, uh, a small number of students went out into the streets of Kiev to protest against this. On the instructions of Vladimir Putin passed down to President Yanukovych, those students were brutalized by the riot police. And the result of that was that more protesters came out to protest against this. And this whole thing escalated to the point where people were now protesting not about the non-signing the treaty, but about the fact that the, the people in power were using Russian tactics against their own citizens. It was a popular overthrow of a president who'd overstepped what people perceived as his authority in relation to how he treated people. Now, the point but, but on a point of information, I, 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 no, I know you haven't, but you virtually, you let's, virtually, let's, let's you, let's no, he's so virtually accused me of speaking untruths. Peter, can and I, I finish and what I, I'm saying? I, I think what the, 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 the needs to be Freddy, an intervention this? before this goes any further. Yeah, I can, but if so, so then have people have will know that a point has been suppressed. You have a You have a chance. Uh, so the, the other point I was going to make is Edward is absolutely right, because I think the one uh, group of people that hadn't been mentioned prior to your intervention in this conversation are Ukrainians who, who overwhelmingly support what President Zelensky is doing, who overwhelmingly support by 90 plus percent the defense of their country, who are overwhelmingly grateful to the West for providing weapons and finance and support and help to the refugees. And when I speak to people in Ukraine, the first thing they say is make sure you tell people in England and they call it England, I'm afraid, how <laughs> grateful we are here. So I, I think we shouldn't ignore the fact that when we talk about the Americans using the poor Ukrainians, the Ukrainians themselves want help. They're the ones that are asking for it. And so this idea that the evil Americans have brainwashed uh, poor agency Leslie Ukrainians to, 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 to be fighting this war is complete hogwash. So the first mention of Russia in the history books is 882. In the entire period since 882 to the present day, Russia has never had a single democratic transition of power. You think that's NATO's fault? It's not true. Okay. What so do you mean it's not true? It's not true. The, the, the election of the Constituent Assembly in, in, in 1917 was one of the biggest and most successful democratic elections, particularly conducted yeah. in wartime ever made by any country, which was then destroyed by the Bolsheviks at the point of a bayonet. But there's no question at all. It, last? it didn't, I, I, it's not a question of how long it lasted. Yeah. It happened. My point and it's is been we didn't have any democracy. It's out of history because people don't know any Russian history. Um, sorry about this, but I mean, I, by the, you said, which countries was it that your father was responsible for keeping under Russia's thumb? The Baltic states and other former states. In, in which countries. years? Uh, he would have been in the Yeltsin government, so probably early 90s. Not a very good job then. No, it wasn't. <laughs>
Look, Ukrainians don't like me saying this. I'm very concerned about the idea that Ukraine must recapture Crimea, even though I believe it's Ukrainian territory. But the, the, the geopolitics of a region as such, Russia would not be prepared to give that up at almost any cost. But the, the Donbass provinces? I, again, I don't think anyone particularly cares in Ukraine about the Donbass provinces. They really, they, really don't. No, the, people the, who live there. Do. President Zelensky will go out and say, you know, we're going to recapture all our territory because his job is to marshal his country to defend itself and to, to raise the spirits of his countrymen and the army and so on. No one actually cares about the Donbass in Ukraine. No one would be willing to sac sacrifice hundreds of thousands of lives to recapture it. Robert Kagan, one of the leading neoconservative uh, anti-Russian figures in Washington politics, and indeed married to Victoria Newland, who at the State Department has been very active in the, the policy of confronting Russia, uh, has said in Foreign Affairs magazine that beyond doubt Russia was provoked. And I think it is so simple, a, a, simple, a, a simple matter of fact. What should not have been done is what I said in my opening remarks. What should not have been done is the, the, the steady, uh, relentless provocation of Russia, which, which was basically contained in the expansion of NATO ever further east. Now, Russia put up with it. Russia did not lose a war in 1989 or 1990 or 1991. Yeah, Russia did. was never defeated. You Lost had a very war. long go, Constantine, and I've been sitting here with extraordinary patience listening to you. Russia did not, was not defeated in a war, and it gave up hundreds of thousands of square miles of territory, not merely in Central Europe, but also in Central Asia, because it was so weak. And I remember being in Moscow during the first great parade of the, of the Russian army through Red Square a few years ago, when my, my good friend, now the, 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 the late uh, Igor Moyshev, stood beside me as we watched all this stuff go past. He said, what do you think of our display of strategic scrap metal? He, like many Russians, knew perfectly well that as Edward and people such as him constantly otherwise claim, that Russia remained extremely militarily weak. And I think if one thing has been proved in the past year, it is the point made repeatedly by people like me that Russia was being hugely overestimated mm. as a military power has been forgotten. Same... And, we, ha and we, now, we, we now face a position where it may be that Russia can't be defeated. Actually, nuclear weapon states can be defeated. The United States was defeated in Vietnam and Britain was defeated in Northern Ireland. We're both nuclear weapon states. You do, if you can't use them, they're not much use to you in, in, in resolving things. Russia could be defeated. And then what? But the point, the point here is this. But Some of us are going to be asked here what, uh, to, to, to try to negotiate on behalf of one side or another. I decline to do so. What I would actually prefer to see is the status quo ante. Uh, Ukraine re restored to its, its sovereignty and integrity as before the putsch, uh, which was a putsch against Yanukovych in, in, in February 2014. And the, uh, the country restored to its unity. And I would lay, then like to see people try to work towards a situation nearly as good as the one we had between 2001 and 2014, during which the actions of the United States created wholly unnecessary tension in a very dangerous area. But so what, you can do, more, what you can do about it line, now? You're more hardline than Constantine. I'm much more hardline. I don't, I, don't, I, don't so, I don't think you should reward aggression under any, any circumstances. Peter, that was the question. Well, it's just a tragedy. What, you know, it was a tragedy it's just that a we tragedy. had to respond to it. So uh, that uh, happened. Well, we should Despite respond to it. Despite what should have been The public opinions of all the three countries in North America and Western Europe should be mobilizing to put an end to this cretinous uh, Wolfowitz doctrine strategy pursued by a foreign policy faction in the United States, which is determined to prevent what it fantastically believes will be the return of Russia as a great power. It has been pursued since the 1990s and has led us to this. It's and a crazy policy. It's done nothing but good except to arms manufacturers, and it has caused this terrible war, the first war in Europe, in my lifetime, and I am nearly 72. Well, it's caused this war, a policy which is completely unnecessary, has done no good, cannot be explained uh, to civilized people without embarrassment, and has absolutely no benefit for anyone in this room. Okay. And we should, the, 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 peoples well, of, we the peoples of Western Europe and North America should be rising up against it as they rose up against the equal stupidity of the, of, of the Iraq war in 2003. Neither of, the, of uh, our esteemed opposition have answered the question of what should be done. And Thomas says... I have. I just answered it. I just, I just, no, I, I, I just answered Peter it. Peter absolutely answered. did not answer it at I did. All. I said the peoples of, the West, of, of, of Western Europe and North America should combine uh, to, pr to press their democratically elected leaders to end this foolish policy. How? How? By, by the forces which are available in a law-governed democratic which country. Or public, well, no, no. What, or public, what would be public opinion and organization. How would you end the war? That's how I would do it. How, how? would I end the war? I would, I would put, put, put pressure on the United States and Russia, who are the principal participants, to make peace.
How? But, that, but, but as I say, particularly, it, 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 it's my belief, you, you keep but asking. How do they make Thank you for keeping asking, because I can, I can expand on it. In the United States, where support for this war is already diminishing in, 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 the, in the American public, with good reason, in the United States, once it becomes clear that the people are not interested in continuing, then the politicians in Washington, D.C. Will, will also lose, lose interest, and so will the White House. And do what? And when the, when the, when, once the Americans have ceased have ceased to believe that there is any point in, in domestic policy in pursuing this war, the war will end. The war is kept going by fun, fundamentally. By, mean, by, 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 by the method by which the Vietnam War was ended. I'm sorry you're so young, but it is possible for people in okay. democratic countries to organize against wars and bring them you to an end. My it has happened okay. in our lifetime. I, I'm not attempting to make this personal. We've had a very heated conversation. This is not an attack on Thomas or on Peter, but my experience continuing whenever I talk about this uh, with people is that the people who, who, who quote unquote want peace never explain the mechanism by which that peace will be achieved. They say, we must put pressure on the US government. And I say, fine, let's put pressure on the US government. To do what? What is it that you expect them to do? You can, if you want peace, uh, right now, take away all support from the Ukrainians and you will achieve peace very quickly. By well, the slaughter of the Ukrainians. How are you going to achieve peace? Well, I, I, I've made this point. Just let me answer. If Ukraine stops, if Russia stops fighting, there's no more war. Yeah. If Ukraine stops fighting, there's no more Ukraine. Of course. But my point is... But the, Ukraine uh, could stop uh, fighting uh, tonight and the Americans would continue to keep the war going. The, 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 this, is a, this is a... This is a... This is a... This is a war... Leon... Leon... Leon Panetta... What I'm talking about... Leon Panetta... He's not going to fight Ukraine, is he? Leon Panetta... Leon Panetta, who was U.S. Defense Secretary, who was White House Chief of Staff and Head of the CIA, has said this is a proxy war between the United States and Russia. Everybody who knows that. How will the Americans keep fighting? If Ukrainians lose heart and want to stop fighting, the Americans would not allow them. Well, I, 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 I'm not seriously it's maintaining absurd. that. I didn't say That's that. That's what you just said. I mean, I, it's, 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 this, this is, this, we're, it, we're back into the straw man territory, which Constantine said. No, we're just quoting you. But you I would, literally no, just said it. Me. You're okay. you're you just mis, said it. Okay. You're okay. misquoting me. But the, the point I was going to ask <laughs> Edward was this. He said that, that what was required was a decisive military advantage. Now, since he won't say what sort of settlement he would accept, uh, I think it's fair to, for him to, to explain what he believes a decisive oh, military gladly. advantage yes. for the, let's, let's the American let's Ukrainian let's side would look like. Okay. So this will have been the fundamental achievement of all this effort, will have been the replacement of Vladimir Putin, that sinister tyrant, with somebody worse, somebody more unpredictable in a country that's more desperate. I cannot for the life of me see how this could be rated as a major achievement of Western diplomacy or politics. And I keep saying it. What has been the purpose? I go back to what George Kennan, who's, who's cleverer than anybody in this room, uh, prophetically said all those years ago. Why are we doing this? Why are we making this grave mistake? And having made it and seen the, the, the horrors in piles of corpses and destroyed cities, having seen the horrors which it results in, why are we persisting in it? It, it, it is perfectly possible. I don't know why Constantine is so derisive about the idea that the peoples of free countries should, should lobby and, and press their governments That's to bring right. an end to stupid policies. It's our duty as human beings to do this for, the, for, for, for our own sake and for the sake of those who come after us. Okay. We have no higher duty than to bring this idiocy to an end. And if the end of it is a, is a, is a possibly rather squalid uh, deal, which none of us particularly likes, then remember that almost all of us spent our lives in the shadow of the most squalid appeasement deal in the history of the human race, made at Yalta between Winston Churchill, Franklin Roosevelt, and Stalin, which secured the peace and prosperity, prosperity of Western Europe for many years. Squalor may sometimes be necessary, and jaw jaw is better than war war. And this enthusiasm for war, which for some reason persists in this country, really does need to be curbed. Because when it comes home to you, when you see what a human head looks like, when a bullet has passed through it, as I did that January night in, in, in 1991 in Vilnius, then your view of it will change. The notion that uh, to support Ukraine in defending itself is uh, to be pro-war uh, is uh, insulting to me uh, personally, and I think it's completely untrue. Uh, we are supporting a country that has become a victim of foreign aggression. We're allowing them to defend themselves. We're allowing them to retain their sovereignty. We're allowing them uh, to determine the fate uh, of their own country by themselves. Uh, and as long as uh, we continue to do that, I've made the point here. I don't think the constructive ideas about how to end this conflict are coming from its critics. 
Uh, I think we've made a very good case for how that war ends. I'm less, um, I'm less aggressive, I suppose, in, in my approach to how this war would end, because I think the collapse of uh, the Putin regime or some kind of Brest-Litovsk would be very, very bad for the world. And I think the, the event, this is why I don't believe we should pursue a defeat Russia by any means sort of strategy at all. But well, as I said before, what we need to do is allow the Ukrainians to stand up for their country to get a good outcome. And the good outcome must mean that they have permanent long-term security so that this never, ever happens again.